Hello. What I'm going to do in this tutorial is demonstrate what I think is quite a useful technique. It's basically a way of structuring our dialogue to force the player to ask all four of the dialogue options before the quest will continue. So you might want to use it, for example, if there's an NPC who's maybe given a lot of exposition and you want to force the player to ask four sets of questions before uh, it'll move on. Or maybe you want the player to ask only two of the dialogue lines before it moves on, but you want to, once those two dialogue lines have been asked, anything to move it on. You'll, you'll understand a little bit more about how this works as I go through the process, but basically it's going to force the player to ask a set number of the dialogue lines out of the four uh, available. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do is create an actor to actually do the talking. So I'm going to right click new here and give it a unique ID tutorial underscore for question NPC I guess give it a name um, questioner I suppose and click unique and click OK so we will be using that unique flag later so that is important make sure to double check that the unique flag has actually been set because sometimes if you click this unique flag then you start shooting off into these other tabs like this, it'll actually remove the unique flag, so I always just OK out as soon as I've actually set it up. So now we're going to want to create a quest to house our dialogue, so go to the quest section, and I'm going to right click new in here, and give it a unique ID, so I'm going to call it tutorial underscore questions quest. Uh, we don't really need to give it a name because it's not actually going to be displayed in the pit boy. I'll give it a priority of 45, but again, in this instance, the priority is not super important. I want it start game enabled because I want it to be available from the start of the game. And we're going to need to OK out of this to get access to the rest of the files. The rest of the tabs, even. Open it back up again. And we have all of this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a script. And we're not actually going to be doing any scripting in particular, but what we need to do is we need to create a variable to track how many questions that we've asked. This can be done by creating a global variable, but it's not really necessary to do that because no other quest is really going to need to access this variable. It only really needs to be accessed within this um, quest itself. So I'm going to add and I'm going to do a new script. I'm going to hit OK. Give it an ID. Uh, tutorial questions script will do and check this conditional flag and hit OK and this should come up but we're going to cancel that because I always type in my properties manually right click edit source if you forgot to set that conditional flag type conditional up here this will be important later so I'm just going to create my variable so I'm going to want to make it an integer questions Asks. This can be called anything you want, but it's best to give it, um, you know, some kind of sensible name to help you remember what it is. And we're just going to use the auto flag there because we just want to leave it a, a default value of zero and conditional because we are going to be. Oh, I made a mistake. Int property because you have to tell it that it's property. Questions asked auto, so we'll leave it the auto value. Conditional because we're going to want to be changing uh, that variable. Close that. That's now done. We don't need to do any more scripting than that, which is, again, it kind of seems a bit pointless making a whole script just to do that, but it's a tutorial, so I'm just demonstrating the method. It would be pointless to make a whole global just to do that. Next up, we're going to do the dialogue. So I assume you have some basic uh, grasp of dialogue, but I'm just going to go through the whole thing anyway. We're going to need an alias to hold our NPC, so we're going to right click New Reference Alias. And the name of this alias um, has to be unique to all the other aliases in our quest. But since we don't have any others, we're just going to call them questioner. Unique actor. See, this is why the unique flag was important earlier. Tutorial question NPC was the NPC that we created earlier on. OK. And I always regularly OK out and save because the creation kit is prone to crashing. So now we're going to create the dialogue itself. So I'm going to go to a scene. I'm going to right click new in here and I'm just going to write scene 01 at the end of that. It's got to be a unique ID. OK. So now click on our scene and we're going to want to add our NPC. So I'm going to right click 
new actor and select questioner and I'm going to select this player dialogue flag which is going to pop up the greetings. So I'm going to double click in the greeting and I'm just going to add underscore greetings to this flag that pops up. So this is just naming the greetings topic. That's all we're doing here. OK, and now we're going to want to type in our greeting. So, hello, do you have any questions? That'll do. And I'm not going to bother adding any conditions because I just want this to run. This is going to be the only section of dialogue that I'm actually going to have in this thing. So I'm just going to hit OK and OK. And in fact, what I am going to do is I'm now going to navigate to quest data. And to save me the bother of having to put the group of conditions in every single greeting I make, because this quest only houses the dialogue of a single NPC, I can actually do a shortcut and add a quest dialogue condition. So if I right click new in here, I can do get is alias ref. It'll default to the first alias I've made, questioner. OK. So now what this will mean is any dialogue in this quest can only be said by the questioning the NPC questioner, who the NPC who occupies the alias questioner. So it just saves me the bother of conditioning every single greeting I create, because if you forget to condition your greetings, every NPC in the game will attempt to save this greeting, and that will obviously completely ruin the vanilla game, because NPCs are going to be trying to do this scene with you all through the game. So you do have to remember to condition your greetings. So I'm going to right click, add phase end. I'm going to right click, new action, player dialogue. And these are going to be the four choices that the player is going to have. And I'm going to set it up so that the player has to say all four of these choices before we continue. So I'm going to OK, I'm going to save, and I'm going to enter back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the stages section, and I'm going to create four quest stages. So one, right click new, two, Right click new, three, right click new, four, right click new. And from, I'm going to put in the designer notes, some kind of note here to remind me about what the question is that's being asked here, because we're going to need to be able to reference this later. So I'm just going to write question one, question two, question three, and question four. And again, I should emphasize these don't actually have to be questions. I'm just setting it up so the player has to ask questions. I mean, the player could be introducing themselves in four different ways. It could be, this could be basically anything. I'm just making sure that we have to say all four of the uh, options. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit more scripting in here. So I'm going to, in this KMY quest section, I'm going to click this drop down. And this is the name of the script that we added earlier for conditional script. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the name of a variable that we created, which I'm pretty sure was questions asked. No, I'm not going to do that at all. I'm going to type in KMY quest dot questions asked plus equals one. So I'm going to compile that and I have done this right. So KMY quest is this script that we've selected. So we're just calling KMY quest. So we're just calling on the script. A dot, questions asked is a variable, and plus equals one means we'll be incrementing this variable by one when this stage is set. And I'm just going to copy this because we are going to need to do that in every single one of these quests. Oh, son of a, you have to select the KMY quest every single time as well. That was me being too quick. Oh, almost forgot to do it. I often do forget to select the KMY quest, but it'll throw up that compiler error if you do forget. So, another important thing to note, this allow repeated stages, we must not have that selected. And I'll explain why later, but that we must not have that selected. So I'm going to jump into my scene now, and we're going to have to think about, well, I'm not going to put too much thought into what I want to put in, because it's just for tutorial purposes. So I'm just going to write in question 01 and just copy it and paste it in to the response. So the question of a prompt is what the player will see um, in the dialogue interface. The response text is the exact subtitles that will appear. So I'm just going to have them both be exactly the same. I always type out the full response in my prompt so that it mimics the full dialogue interface, uh, which I just think is nicer. Question two. 
Again, I imagine you've actually got something in mind that you want to say in your mod and that you don't just want to have open question one, question two, question three and question four because that'd be weird. That wouldn't really be a very compelling dialogue. Okay, okay, I'm going to set up all the answers next. I'm just going to have the NPCs just going to say answer 01 again. It's not the most compelling dialogue, but it is a tutorial. The exact order that I'm doing these in as well isn't super important. I'll sort of, I'm just sort of doing it like this to do everything in blocks rather than jumping back and forward between typing stuff out and um, actually implementing the particular functionality that I need to implement. Okay, 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 okay save. So the way that we've got this set up at the moment, what is going to happen is he's going to greet the player, the player will ask one of these questions and the scene will end because we've got nothing beyond that point. So first of all what we're going to want to do is we're going to give this phase a name. So I'm just going to call it question phase. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to hit to apply that change. And now we're going to want to force this um, phase to endlessly loop. So I'm going to right click add phase at end and then I'm going to right click new action and we're going to be starting a scene. So we're going to right click new in here and we're going to select our scene which this is the only scene we've got. It's this one that we're working in now and question phase is the only phase we've got. So we're going to want to do that but we're also going to want to add a condition to this. So I'm going to right click new and I'm going to get VM quest variable and it's going to default to our current quest. And we are going to want to select the questions asked variable. This is why if we haven't got a conditional script, you're not going to be able to do this. That's why that conditional flag is necessary. Okay. And I'm going to say now less than four. So I have four questions. Each time I ask a question, I'm going to implement, I'm going to increment that variable. But if a variable is below four, we are going to be forcibly restarting that scene. So as things stand, however, it is not possible. The variables aren't actually getting implement incremented, so the player will currently be trapped forever in your dialogue unless we manage to force their way to run away. So we don't want that. We're going to return inside, and I'm going to enter the player's dialogue. Now, you can do this at the end of the NPC's dialogue as well, but I usually do it um, at the end of a player's dialogue just in case, like, something can happen to interrupt the NPC's dialogue or something like that, just to make certain these stages get set. And so for question one, I'm going to set parent quest stage question 01. So this is why I also have the developer notes, because we can actually see what's going on in each one. For question 02, I'm going to want to set the stage 2. For question 3, I'm going to want the stage for question 3. And for question 4, I'm going to want to set the stage for question four. And now the thing with setting quest stages is because we don't have allow repeated stages, if a player asks question one over and over and over again, this script will not run. It'll only run once. It won't run the second time because we've not allowed it to run. So you can't just ask question one four times and bypass the other questions. It's also worth knowing that if a player asks question four first, it does allow him to then set questions one, three or two in any order they want. It, these can be triggered, but the quest stage itself will always be recorded as four. But these earlier questions can be triggered and their scripts run, providing they've not already been triggered. So they can be set in any order, essentially, which means a player can ask for questions in any order, which means they can increment the variable in any order. So at the moment where we've got this set up, is the player has four questions to ask. Once we've asked all four questions, the scene's just going to hard end. So I'm just going to put in another phase at the end, just to have a little bit of extra dialogue. Right click new, double click in here. And this is what the NPC is going to say once we've bypassed the loop stage. So you've asked me all four questions. Now you know everything. Goodbye. And now the scene is going to end. It doesn't matter about selecting end running scene because it'll end once it runs out of phases anyway. But I'm going to. 
So essentially what's going to happen now is we're going to greet our NPC, they'll ask if I have any questions, I'll be presented with all four of these questions. When I ask a first question, it's going to implement our variable by one, but because the variable itself is still below four, it's just going to kick us right back to the beginning. And it's going to keep on and on doing that until we've asked all four questions, incremented our variable to equal four, at which point it's no longer below four. And then we're going on to this end phase. OK, save. And the final thing we're going to want to do is actually place our NPC in the world, because if we don't place our NPC in the world, we're obviously not going to be able to talk to them. And this quest isn't even going to start because it'll fail to fill the alias. And then the question won't start, the quest won't start, because um, the alias won't be filled. So I usually like to edit Abernathy Farm exterior. Not for any particular reason, it's just because that's where my character is in the save. So this is what I always do. Okay, so I'm just going to throw him into Abernathy Farm at random. And we're floating in the air. Yeah, it's not going to look great, but, you know, it's just a tutorial. It doesn't really matter. Again, I'm imagining that you guys have got something in mind if you're watching this video. So that should be the lot. He should now be able to do his dialogue and loop through. So I'm going to go into the game and demonstrate what that looks like in practice. Okay, so we are here in Abernathy Farm, where our NPC should be hanging. I mean, there he is. I can see him over there. You know what? We can just see a little bit better if it's the daytime. Uh, hello, do you have any questions? I have exactly four. Oh, they've come up in a weird order, but I don't suppose it really matters. It's probably because of the UI mods that they've come up in the wrong order, but it's not super important. Answer four. So I should just be able to demonstrate. I'll demonstrate just asking the same one over and over again and demonstrate that that won't move us on because as I say, um, each quest stage is not allowed to be repeated. Yeah. Question one. Also, the, the player subtitles don't show up. That is because of a mod I've got on. Can I, I don't know why it does it, but it doesn't show up on the subtitles of this particular mod. So this should be the last one. So once I set this one, we should now bypass the skipping phase and go straight to a bit where he says we've asked all the questions. Hey! And because I didn't condition the greeting in any way, he'll probably just... Hi try and get me to do it again yeah do you have any questions but if i ask one again he's going to skip them all because um i've already variable is already four so he's just going to skip them all on that time well that's basically the principle of you can force the player to have to say all four of the dialogue lines it can be useful in exposition it can be useful in like longer conversations where you don't want to be endlessly adding loops and thing and oh god we don't want to be endlessly adding loops and things like that. It's, it's quite, I think it's quite a useful, quite a, a neat little trick to know. So hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching and uh, goodbye.